Last time on Dragon Ball Z, Goku's son, Gohan, was able to tap into his deepest powers and finally destroy the monstrous cell. Finally, after years of turmoil caused by Dr. Jiro's androids, the Earth was back to normal. Except for one thing. Goku, who was killed in a desperate attempt to defeat Cell, could not be revived by the powers of the Earth's dragon. And despite a clever plan to bring him back to life, Goku decided it would be safer for the Earth if he didn't return. And so friends and family were forced to say goodbye to the Saiyan they loved. Despite this terrible loss, the world was finally at peace. Or was it? Somewhere on the planet Earth, Something ancient and horrible was sleeping, and terror beyond imagination. And the forces of evil were preparing to awaken it from its primeval prison. Two games down, one to go. Hey guys, Saxdo26 here, and we're finally at the end of the trilogy with Let's Play Dragon Ball Z The Legacy of Goku 3. The final arc in the Z Saga. Or as you guys will probably know this game, Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury. I'm quite partial to the plot in Legacy of Goku 2, but the amount of polish they take from 1 and 2 and refine for Boo's Fury is incredible. This is by far the most well-rounded game in the entire trilogy. In fact, even before you start, it's got multiplayer in it. But that's, again, that's a post-Let's Play thing to focus on in the extra videos. That's not relevant to the plot. And speaking of plot, we've got to follow up right at the end credits. Previously in Dragon Balls, I literally just did this opening. Don't make me repeat myself. That's right, the music I've been using for my title cards came from this game. Talk about immersion. And speaking of chapter titles, Boost Fury's got them built in. It feels like you're watching the show, which is great for the game, but horrendous for my playthrough. The editing is going to be jank. Meanwhile, millions of light years above, along the winding track of Snake Way, Goku was adjusting well to life in the other world. That's right! The events of this game literally start right as Legacy of Goku 2 finishes. Shenron has granted his wishes, Goku's asked not to be wished back, and, yeah, we're literally following up right after King Kai's planet got blown up by Cell. How many times can I say this? We can't make bad time here, because in this world, time never runs out. Yeah. Fun fact, other world time is limitless. Goku will not age while he is dead. I mean, that's kind of the way being dead works, but anyway. Goku's already ready for another fight, and he's got plenty of time, but he wants to head straight to it. I have to tell you, Goku, you better not think lightly of him. It's... Mmm... Love the little bits of lore we get at the start here, especially this. You know I am King Kai, and I watch over the Earth, and your part of space. The universe is divided into four quadrants, north, south, east, and west quadrants, each with their own King Kai, but further above us is the Grand Kai. So, King Kai actually governs over about a quarter of other world space, which is pretty cool to learn about, and we'll actually get to see the other Kais, which is pretty neat. So how do we get to Grand Kai's planet anyway? You have to take a plane. It's got... <laughs> The world of Toriyama and its puns! I can't... I can't with this game. It's so good. It's so dumb and it's so good. See you there! Journal entry. Go to King Yemen's castle. So yeah, you'll already notice the HUD's had a bit of an upgrade. We start with a couple of abilities. And we got a block button! But I'll get onto that later. I was actually looking for the scouter because, yeah, world map. There. I've actually still got the scouter, so I can scan Gregory and King Kai and Bubbles here in the other world. This is fantastic! And the other really neat thing is, uh, we've all got halos above our heads because again, King Kai's planet was destroyed, which means we all died. We're, we're all dead. Um, Snakeway's also had a pretty insane upgrade since the Legacy of Goku 1, and I love, I love the aesthetic of it. It's fantastic. You can even see the cloud layer dividing um, heaven and hell, effectively. Oh, sorry, HFIL to be specific. And even, like, the bridge going off the tongue. So, yeah. And it means we actually get to come here to, um... To, to Yemma's office. This is fantastic! Like, mmm! These were areas we've seen before, 
and they've had a massive upgrade. It's insane. And I can even, like, scan the spirits, and the assistants, and oh, this is amazing. Can I? I can scan Yammer as well. I'm going to be gushing for a little bit, so just deal with it. I can even scan King Yammer now. This is, this is a big deal. This is a big deal, and I love the massive upgrade this game has had. Hey, King Yammer! Can I please have next soul? Hey, King Yammer, how's it going? <laughs> Our old friend Goku dead already again. <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> King Kai, how in the world did you die? Uh, you see, it's a long story. <laughs> no time for... Goku, time does not run out. We do have time for longer stories. Where is the higher plane? Well, up, I would assume. Go to the left. You sure you don't want a cup of tea? I just, I, I love it. I love it so much. It's just so dorky and so wonderful. And just the extra touches. How about the spirits? Yes, I'm going to heaven. Oh yes, it's gonna be awesome. So awesome, I know it. You didn't keep your body when you died though. And as we've learned, not keeping your body means you go straight to heck. Sir, I'm afraid you can't go this way. You'll have to... Wait a second. You still have your body. I haven't worked here for you long, and you're the first person I've seen who's kept their body. D don't tell King Yama that, but he doesn't have a halo, so I guess it doesn't count. Please, go ahead. Did we just cheat the system? I think we just cheated the system. <laughs> this is the plane that goes to heaven. The higher plane is on the other dock. So yeah, um, technically the level that uh, Snake Way is in is Limbo. That plane goes to heaven, and then the higher plane goes to other portions of the other world as well. This will take you to Grand Kai's planet. What? How come we get stuck with this clunker of a plane? Now look at this. The character portraits have emotion. They didn't have to, but they did. They went the extra mile on presentation, and I love it. Uh, yeah, G G Grand Kai lives in a mansion. The Grand Kai's planet really doesn't look like much. Watch your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess it's more impressive. <laughs> Goku. Especially since your planet was blown up with Celex. Goku. There are consequences to your actions. Don't remind me, you're a very rude man. So where is this Grand Kai? I really want to see him fight. To tell you the truth, Goku, in all these years I haven't had the privilege of seeing Grand Kai fight. But they said no words can describe his fighting style. Wow. That's a, that, that's a pretty good legend to go with him. It's not something to be taken lightly, so why don't you introduce yourself to some of the other fighters? Maybe you'll learn something. And there's a save circle right below us, so... Yeah! We're making some pretty good progress already. We've had a solid upgrade to our arsenal of things. Um, we've got a couple of energy attacks we can play around with too, and our selection has changed a little bit. And just like King Kai, Grand Kai has a car hour as well, which is, I mean, no surprise there. And again, three save files does make life a little more accessible. So yeah, fighters abound. Ah, greetings, King Kai. It is good to see you. Oh, Alibu. I'd like you to meet Goku. He's new here. Hey, Alibu. Alibu is from Earth, just like you, Goku. Most of your heroic legends are based off this guy. This guy, to the best of my understanding, in Toriyama's universe, is the analog for Hercules. Not Hercule. Hercules. Yeah. You have to show that you're perfectly qualified or else you'd just be wasting your Grand Kai's time. I guess. You should talk to the other fighters here. They might be able to teach you a thing or two. So yeah, we can talk with all of these NPCs here and they'll tell us some pretty nifty things. I have a technique that makes me totally invincible. It's called energy blocking. Hold down the R button to block and then push the B button. You're surrounded by glowing energy and nothing can hurt you. Of course, it eats up your energy really quickly and you can't do anything else while you're doing it. Every time I use it in a fight, I run out of energy and get whooped. But it might be handy in a pinch. So yeah, one major change to this game, pushing the R button allows us to block and we can focus our energy into an energy shield. How freaking cool is that? The system is getting more and more polished the more we go. Oh yeah, now I can beat me, I'm the bomb. Wanna know how I do it? Keep an eye on my health and energy meters. The red meter is your health, green is your energy meter. The blue bar shows how much experience you've got. Knowing these things is important to know how to fight. Things we already know. I just finished doing 5 million push-ups. You can really get a good workout in a place where time has no meaning. 
Well, let's get started then. Hey, you're never around here, aren't you? Want to learn some fighting tips? If you're learning to kick butt, all you have to do is use everything at your disposal to win. Sure, punching and kicking with the A button is cool, but all characters use B button for their special techniques. We do. What's all these guys? They keep talking about the A button and health meters. It's like they think we're in the video game for Fourth wall! Hey, you know how to block, right? Well, technically I'm doing this in reverse order. Whoops. <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> all the best fighters train using weighted clothing. Well, I mean, technically Goku's wristbands and boots have always been weighted, so I guess it makes sense. You should check those chests of- Ooh. I will do that indeed. Speak of the devil. One ton armbands and one ton boots. You guys are gonna like this next mechanic. Hey, do you know how to equip things? No, indulge me. To equip an item, press start and press the R button to cycle through the menu options until you get to the equip menu. That's right, guys. Menu is much bigger because we've got a lot more stuff to work with. You can choose to equip one of each item and change them whenever you like. Thanks for the tips. I'm gonna do just that. No problem. What are we working with here? So the equipment menu is new to Boost Fury and helps you to augment your stats beyond what you normally get for leveling up. With the addition of speed being a new factor. At the moment all we've got is weighted training gear which actually decreases your speed. And all equipment's going to have a dedicated level you need to be above to equip it. Of course since we maxed out everyone's level last game, everyone's above level 50 so anyone can equip the one time boots and armbands. And the difference you're going to notice in the movement speed isn't immediate, because it's only one ton. But the difference it makes to experience, oh, it's well worth it, believe me. Hey Goku, up ahead is the Battlefield Royale. It's a grueling maze full of strong fighters. Yeah, that sounds like Goku's Avenue. Incredible fighting challenge, I'm so there. <laughs> I admire your enthusiasm. I mean, have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? Good luck, Goku. Don't worry, Kevin Sorbo, I got this under control. Just saying. Just, just saying. <laughs> Oh, and this music, the howling. I love this music. You're going down, rookie. Really? I, I'm going down? Well, well, my Kamehameha wave says otherwise. Just, just stating facts. Just, I can only be honest. And that guy dropped a, um, a white belt, which is pretty neat. So yeah, even in the other world, opponents drop as any and items. Because again, we're not killing them, we're just knocking them out cold. Because they're already dead again. Remember, remember, other world, they're already dead. They're already dead. And with that, we've hit level 61 and gained three stat points. I'll get to what that means in a second, because yeah, the, uh, you're gonna find the leveling system has had a massive upgrade since the last game, and look! Miso soup! We got a couple of things to talk about. First up, every time you level up, you get to choose wherever you put your stat points, into strength, power, or endurance. Speed is off limits, the other three you've got complete access to. Miso soup is a healing item. It gets added to our inventory. And that waistband, the white belt, is an endurance boost that we can equip in the accessories. You're going to be finding that enemies will be dropping equipment left, right and center, as well as healing items as well. Pretty cool stuff, but the main thing? What am I going to be doing with the stat points? It was recommended in my comment section that I find a way to make sure that I don't accidentally cheese through the whole game and make things way too easy. Because again, every time we level up we get three points, unless we're using equipment that gives us a fourth one every time we level up. I'm going to be avoiding using that kind of equipment as we go. That's brought us to level 63. And what I'm instead going to do is equip two points for every level up that I get. One, two, three, four, five, six. And basically, this is my way of padding things out so that I don't make things stupidly broken and easy, but also so that I don't make things ridiculously hard for myself. I figure it's the best of both worlds and the best way to balance out the leveling so that I still actually use this mechanic, but that I don't break the game through it. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. I don't want to destroy the longevity of the game. But yeah, uh, for anyone who's wondering why I went back to the start of the Battlefield Royale, it's actually because in the next screen, the thing I would recommend doing is getting to level 65 first. And as you're going to see when we get there, even the game is going to encourage that. And now we're level 65. Awesome. So, one, two, three, four, five. That's what I need. There we go. So I should be at five points remaining. Good. 
I started at level 60, so that adds up. Cool. Come on. Ah, no. Kamehameha went to the face, sir. Awesome. Alright, now that we're level 65, what awaits us in the next room? It's Olibu. Most impressive. Olibu, how'd you get here? I took a shortcut. Now you ready for a real fight? That depends. I still haven't shown off my other energy attack. Instant transmission. Move the cursor over to an enemy, teleport to them, and teleport back to where you're standing. It is incredibly fun to use this ability, and I love it. Okay, okay, I win, you give up. Say, I have an idea. Follow me. Level 65 character gate, right off the bat. This is why I got Goku to level 65, because he needs to be that level to move forward. Same kind of deal as in Legacy of Goku 2. But you're going to be finding there is an abundance of them compared to last game. This is the Cave of the Ancients. It's said there is an ancient artifact hidden inside. However, nobody has ever been able to get to it. Hmm. It's a pretty hefty door. Wait a second. What if I use my Kamehameha wave? So if at this point you haven't bothered to play around with Goku's special energy attacks, it prompts you to do so here. And it gives you a full refill for your energy for doing so. Bingo! Nobody's been able to get- Did you not see this awesomeness? Did you not see me harnessing my key? Great job, I'm blowing up the door, but if I'm not mistaken, this wall is made of Kachin. Remember that metal. Remember that metal. Sure, your Kamehameha wave is strong, but I don't think it'd bust through this wall. That's what we've got instant transmission for. And with that, we get a cotton gear. Now we've got equipment for all of our slots, which is pretty cool. Amazing, Goku. I once met a Yadra who used that technique. Well, funny you should mention that. You are full of surprises, and only on your first day here. I can't wait to see what the future brings. Meanwhile, back at the mansion, the Kais are squabbling. Pycon is the better fighter. Goku is the better fighter. Pycon! Goku! Pycon! Goku! <laughs> This is so ridiculous! Whoa, look at all the Kai's! <laughs> I heard you can argue in here with West Kai. He says Pycon is the best fighter in the universe. As you well know, Pycon is the well the prize fighter of the West Quadrant. In fact, just the other day, Grand Kai himself called him to stop an uprising in HFIL. We've been there before. I've been there when I fell off Snake Way. King Yemma sent them down some evil guy named Cell, and he met some guy named Freezer and they took over the whole place. Well, doesn't that sound like them? Cell and Freezer? Pycon was able to take care of both of them, no problem. I bet this Goku couldn't do that. You're really rubbing in the events of the last game, huh? Well, Cell and Frieza was no problem, but Cell... Never mind that, Goku is a righteous fighter and has saved the galaxy many times. He's an incredibly strong guy. Listen, guys, this reunion is no time for an argument. This is the first time all four cars have been together in 300 years. <laughs> he's right, you know, instead of arguing, we should prove he's the best martial arts. Oh, did somebody say tournament? Is Grand Kai? Oh boy, I think the tournament is a radical idea. Things decided. Free private lesson for whoever brings home some gold. You mean the winner of the tournament gets a free lesson from you? Sure beats training for ten thousand years. The tournament was held in my house. I'll see everyone there. So, we have an opportunity to prove ourselves. Go to the other world tournament in the Grand Kai's house. We have an option to level up here a little bit and do some more training, but quite frankly, I think we're good to go. After a day on Grand Kai's planet, Goku finds himself entering into another tournament. What will be the outcome? Find out on the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z.